Hey guys, welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave. I hope you're as excited as I am about this Demo Mission 2 launch. But before that happens, we're going to take a look at what's going to happen in pre-launch and right after liftoff. So stick around. I'll be right back. Please hit like and subscribe. It lets me know you're enjoying these videos. Oh yes, Demo Mission 2, the day is here. Robert Bankin and Douglas Hurley will be the two NASA astronauts riding to the International Space Station on the new Crew Dragon SpaceX capsule, along with the Falcon 9 booster. These two must be the most excited guys on the face of the planet right now. I mean, yes, nerves will be high, but the excitement has got to be overwhelming. But before we get into what's going to happen today, we're going to go back two weeks to May 13th in preparation of their upcoming flight. These guys are spending two weeks in quarantine. Pre-flight quarantine has been a practice for decades in the crewed space flight. It's a usual procedure before astronauts go up to the ISS, but there's been additional measures being taken because of this current problem we're having. Some additional safeguards have been added because of the issue. Anyone who will be in contact with the crew during the quarantine period had to be screened prior to their visit. The last thing they want is to take any viruses or even the common cold up to the ISS. On May 25th, NASA concluded its flight readiness review. And after this review, it determined that Demo Mission 2 was a go for launch. Good morning. It's launch day. Current weather forecast on the morning of the launch is scattered thunderstorms with a good chance of rain. Assuming they get a good launch window, and everything looks good. Doug and Bob will be arriving at the launch site in their beautiful Tesla Model X. The crew will board the capsule approximately T minus 2 hours and 30 minutes prior to launch, at which point the hatch is closed. At T minus 45 minutes, SpaceX launch director verifies go for propellant load. Both the crew access arm is retracted and a launch escape system will be armed. At T minus 35 minutes, RP 1, a rocket grade kerosene, will start to load. At the same time, the first stage liquid oxygen will start to load. At T minus 16 minutes, the second stage liquid oxygen will begin to load. At T minus 7 minutes, Falcon 9 will begin its engine shell process. At T minus 5 minutes, Dragon will transition to internal power. At T minus 1 minute prior to launch, command flight computer will take control, do its checks, and propellant tanks will top off. At T minus 45 seconds, the launch director will verify it's a go for launch. At T minus 3 seconds, the engine controller ignition sequence will start. Assuming there's no issues in this process, we'll have liftoff. The flight will begin from historic Pad 39 at Kennedy Space Center. Then the vehicle will hit max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure, approximately one minute into the flight. At about two minutes, 30 seconds, you have MECO, or main engine cutoff. That's when the nine Merlin engines will cut off, and that happens slightly before stage separation. After stage separation, you have ignition of the Merlin vacuum engines. Then you have the first stage flip maneuver. This will put the first stage in position for the boost back burn back into the atmosphere. At this point, the grid fins will deploy. This will help steer the first stage toward the landing ship, Of Course I Still Love You. Then you have the boost back burn. This will slow the booster's re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. At this point, the booster will perform aerodynamic guidance, or maneuvers, which will guide it to the landing area. Then the booster will perform a landing burn. Landing it on the drone ship, of course, I still love you. In the meantime, we have Dragon separation, while the crew capsule continues on to the International Space Station.
Beginning this next week, we're going to start something a little different. For those of you that don't know what Nexus Aurora is, I suggest you take a look at the video in the upper right corner. Nexus Aurora started out as a competition for a contest put out by the Mars Society, where the goal was to design a city that would hold one million people on Mars. We have literally hundreds of volunteering professionals working on this on a daily basis. As a result, I'd like you to participate. I'd like you to start asking questions that you might have regarding the colonization of Mars. You can take these questions and put them in the comments, or you can email them to me at the email in the description. Either way, I'm going to take a handful of these questions and I'm going to answer them in a follow-up video. If I can't personally answer them, I'll take them to the professionals that can, and I'll get you an answer. This here is the mob. These are my patrons. There are some amazing people. You guys are what helps me keep this thing going week after week. I have no words to describe how happy I am you're part of the mob. Thank you so much, guys. And you too can join the mob for as little as $1 a month. Check it out in the description.